This is your Bobby Day Today Evening News Update for Tuesday, November 16. Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Ryan Strong, today piloted a new customs bill intended to modernize the customs department, which he believes will deliver real benefits to the country. The reforms within customs forms part of the overarching strategic policy, sir, for how we reposition Barbados as a transshipment hub, but equally to provide opportunities to make it as easy as possible for any young person who has an idea, who may wish to, to uh, create their opportunities in Barbados, and to be able, sir, <clears throat> to export said goods to wherever in the world, and the Customs Department is positioning itself to be able to facilitate that. Meanwhile, Minister Strong disclosed that government will be introducing an updated tariff so that it is not cheated out on needed revenue. But he hinted that government is looking into absorbing some of the high import costs of items triggered by the disruption in global trade. And I accept, sir, that yes, we have seen in the last year and a half increases in global commodity prices and and, and a whole range of costs that have, been that have been increased because of the disruption in the global supply chain. And yes, in the short term, sir, in the short term, there may be some, some issues that we can resolve with respect to whether we cap the, the freight or what have you. But I can say that based on the information that I have seen to date from customs as it relates to the per kilogram freight cost, sir, we have not necessarily seen the increase in the per kilogram freight cost that, um, that um, have been cited as consistently as, as that is considerably different, sir, from the pre-pandemic uh, level. And that is just, sir, from looking across the range of products that have been imported, and we are monitoring the situation very carefully to see how the government can um, respond, but we have to, to, to mine the data, and we continue to mine the data with respect to that. But opposition leader Bishop Joseph Atherley is calling on the government to take a second look at the island's current tax structure, which he suggested is hurting consumers and local businesses. If we are going to strategically reposition the Barbados economy, we have to look at the tax structure that comes out of the bosom and brains of the street. The life of veteran broadcaster Dennis Johnson was today celebrated in a moving service before he was laid to rest at the Coral Ridge Memorial Gardens. The senior radio producer of Voice of Barbados was remembered as an outstanding giant who gave himself unselfishly to his family and community. His daughter Siobhan Johnson said she had a special relationship with her dad. For many of those who have known me, who say they've known me all my life, there is little distinction to separate my existence from his. My unconventional childhood and being raised by him solely for many years afforded me a very unique perspective on life and my personality, I think for all who know both of us, attribute it directly to his influence. But equally for most of my adult life, the statement, Dennis is your dad, everything about you makes sense, follows me everywhere. Son Justin was equally proud of his father, whom he says shaped his development. When I was about seven years old, I was actually afraid of my father. This tall, booming voice towering over me while I stood at the knees of the giant. But he never discouraged his children from speaking. I remember one day we had all gone to the supermarket as a family and he whisked me away and said, come with me real quick. And we went over then to the then Prime Minister, the late most honorable Owen Arthur. And he said, Mr. Arthur, I have someone that I would like you to meet. And I all bright eyed and filled with enthusiasm looked at the then Prime Minister and said, I am going to take your job. <sighs> Miss Motley, I extend the same courtesy to you. <laughs> That being said, the person who said they would help me manage my campaign is currently unavailable, so that will be on pause for right now. But even if that goal would be put on the back burner later on in life for me, my father forevermore prepared me 
should that day ever come. By age 11, I was now standing at the waist of the giant. My father began to pass on his ever-expanded diaspora of knowledge. In the past week, I have read several tributes to my father. One read, Dennis could explain the politics and governance of Barbados, Grenadad, Grenada, and Trinidad effortlessly. To which I responded, only? My father and I discussed the history, politics, the beliefs of several countries around the world. And in doing so, he prepared me to speak to individuals of any background. And before I even knew what a global citizen was, I was taught global citizenship. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, authorities in Guyana are exploring the possibility of setting up a gun court to tackle the current backlog of gun-related cases, and they have enlisted the help of Jamaica to get started. Police legal advisor Sonia Joseph and Commissioner of Police Acting Nigel Hoppy, along with Deputy Police Commissioner for Law Enforcement, who also serves as the Crime Chief Wendell Blanham, recently met with the Commissioner of the Jamaican Constabulary Force and his team about the impact of the gun court in Jamaica. According to the crime chief, the officials at the meeting were happy to learn that the Jamaican authorities were able to decrease gun-related murders and other gun-related crimes on the island as a result of this gun court. So hopefully, um, our attorney general will be able to have a discussion with members of the judiciary to see how we can establish a gun court in order to reduce the backlog of some of these matters which we have pending for some time and, and we want to ensure that persons are criminal perpetrators are deterred from committing these types of criminal activities. Blanham was speaking on Monday during the announcement of the forces security plan for Christmas. He revealed that some 272 people have been killed by a firearm within 10 years and this he said is a matter of grave concern for the police force. For 2021 thus far, the police have recorded 20 gun-related murders as compared to 27 in 2020. Persons were killed by the perpetrators who decided to use a firearm. This is a matter of concern to us. On the international scene, hundreds of people have gathered in the Sri Lankan capital of Colombo to protest against rising living costs and the government's failure to control them. Al Jazeera Television is tracking the story. They came from all parts of the country. Hundreds of people brought together by the opposition party Samagi Janabala Vega to protest against increases in the prices of essential goods. We don't have food, no place to stay, no job. Is it only their family, the Raja Paksas, that should be nourished? That's why we are here. Gas name is Pitine. There is no gas, no milk powder. My children are crying. My gas finished a day before yesterday, and I cursed the government so much. An estimated $90 billion of debt, an economic slowdown, and the pandemic have hit Sri Lanka hard. A currency crisis has left it with foreign reserves of just over $2 billion enough to pay for imports for six weeks. That's left the country short of basic goods and having to restrict imports. President Gotabe Rajapaksa declared a state of emergency which had little effect. 
That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.